Hello all. Welcome to the episode 13 in hexadecimal of Debugging TV Frames program. You can type your questions during this episode. If I can't answer particular questions now, I then post answers on the website debugging.tv. We briefly discuss topics such as on this list. Our main topic is a so-called return value optimization in C++. During the previous Mac OS X core dump analysis training, one of participants asked to elaborate on this topic in the context of Mac OS X and Xcode environment. He experienced the same problem in Microsoft Windows environment where tracing output became corrupt due to such optimization. To model such optimization in the context of software tracing, I created a simple C++ program, which creates an object with an identity. If you look at main function, so it creates an object on stack. Object class is called A. So you see that every constructor, copy constructor, destructor, and functions, they all have tracing statements. And you see when we create a new object, its identity number is increased. So it starts from one. So what we see, we create an object, then print its identity, and then we create another object actually in full function. The object is created and returned, and then Another object is copy constructed from the returned object. And uh, another bar function is called that paints it its identity. So what we would expect, so this call is somehow equivalent to this one. So basically we, expect the output like here. So first, the first object is created, then foo function creates second object, then we have the third object, A2, and uh, we see we should see copy constructor uh, called, and then we have a bar function called, and then we have destructors in the opposite order called. So what we would expect, but instead, if you run this application, we get this output. There's no copy constructor tracing statement, we don't see it in the output. So if we go back to our source code, we don't see this statement at all. So basically this is actually, this is what is called as a return value optimization. So we see that the side effect of a constructor, of copy constructor was eliminated and if you put some logic here, then this logic, this logic would be eliminated and what probably resulted in uh, trace corruption in Microsoft environment because uh, return value optimization is common feature of modern compilers. And so to understand how 
this optimization works, it's better to look at assembly language. In an Xcode environment, you can generate assembly language. So let's already generated it. So basically, what we need to look at main function and find. So we first see, let's see. First, we see constructor. We call, you see, uh, AC. A is class and C is constructor. So, and then there is bar function call. Then we see another call foo function that creates an object. And then there is another bar, another bar function call. And then we have destructors called. And uh, see that. For foo function, we already supply the address on stack. Supply this address for object construction. And if we go to foo function assembly language, uh, what we see here is that constructor is called, but this address, remember it was passed by RDA, and here we go, it is used here to construct an object, and this object is reused in main. So what I did, I, first of all, I annotated source code. See source code with tracing. You get this presentation afterwards. I put it on debugging.tv. And I also highlighted important instructions for full function call and then uh, calling bar function on this object A2 and then a destructor. And uh, I put all this also on this diagram that shows memory. So, first of all, when we create this object with identity one, the first one it's put here under this address, this register. So, this is You may also find additional variable, local variable created that holds the address of uh, this object. So it basically points here. And then when we call foo function, the address to hold the newly constructed object. So this value. This address is passed to foo function. So this is all for uh, this exercise. Next, we have a usual add slide. In December, there starts free webinar on philosophy of software diagnostics that continues the line from the two previous webinars on pattern-driven software diagnostics and uh, systemic software diagnostics. You can find the recordings and presentations on Software Diagnostics Services website, dumpanalysis.com.
And so, thank you for watching this episode. Please later check out the slides and recorded video from debugging.tv. And the next episode is in October. It's scheduled for October on some date. So thank you again for attending and see you next month. Bye-bye.